So hopefully you've already watched the video lecture series where I talk about what science is, and you also watched the lecture series where I introduced the scientific method. In this lecture series, we'll talk about the scientific knowledge and the levels of truth and the scientist's everlasting task to try to find that truth and refine it with time. How can you trust science if it's like something that's always changing? But does it really change that fast? And why, how can scientific knowledge be ever-changing and still be trustworthy, robust, and all of that? And to start that, we're going to talk about the difference between a theory and a hypothesis. Very important concept, and I hopefully you understand after we talk about this, that they're not the same thing at all, and that also the way that we, the word theory is used in society can mislead you to misrepresent what it actually means in science. So you've learned about the scientific method and how science employ the scientific method to increase its the body of knowledge that exists in science. So we talked about the scientific method, about that word, hypothesis, that you see here at the center of this diagram. Now remember that from the observations, you, you understand them and then you try to explain them, to make predictions about them, you're going to generate hypotheses. Now, after you do that, you're going to test this hypothesis. If your hypothesis is not consistent, you're going to go ahead and modify your hypothesis. But if the hypothesis is consistent with the data, in other words, the data fails to reject the hypothesis, and other people go back then and replicate your experiment, and maybe expand on your experiment, then you can start developing what we call a theory. So a theory in science is not something that you think, oh, I think this is what it is. That's more like a hypothesis. You know when we use the word theory in society, we use it like, oh, I have a theory about this. I think this is how it works. Well, if you think that's just how it works, then it's, that's more like a hypothesis. That's how we would say it in science. A theory, it's not what you think it's like how it works, it's how you know it works, based on all the evidence that you've already collected. So, a hypothesis, like a prediction, it's like your guess, almost. A guess is like an inference, right? A hypothesis is based on that. It's more than just a guess. It's, it's something that is actually establishing the relationship between two variables. Meanwhile, a theory, it's more like I've already tested this hypothesis many times. In fact, I may have tested several hypotheses all about the same group of things, and now we incorporate all of these things into a theory. That is what it is, a theory in science. And we're going to talk about examples of that shortly so you can see what I'm talking about a little bit better. But you should create then a, sep a T chart here to separate a hypothesis from a theory. So on the left side, you can talk about a hypothesis and on the right side let's talk about theories so let's talk let's do that all right so let's see on the right left side we're gonna put hypothesis on the right side we put theory and so you're gonna fill this in as I'm talking about it all right so hypothesis a hypothesis you do before you start the experiment so this is before before the experiment because that means that you're still trying to predict what's going to happen but you don't know if that's actually going to be supported by data or not all right if the data is going to fail to reject it or not now on a on that a theory is going to be after an experiment or after you test it that's very important which means the hypothesis is proposed it's a prediction all right it's a proposition while a theory it's a working explanation so what, why your hypothesis is what you are predicting as an explanation, a theory is what you currently hold to be the best explanation. So that's the biggest difference between them. A hypothesis is not tested. It's not science yet. It's part of what is science and how you make science, but it's not yet ingrained into what we call scientific knowledge, while a theory is already based on evidence. So while a hypothesis is based on inferences, it's based on your educated guess and things that you do based on what you've known before. A theory is actually based on data. It's based on empirical, hopefully, if you can manip manipulate data, but at least correlational data. Data that you collected to explain the phenomena. The data that it will say if the hypothesis is rejected or failed to be rejected. So a hypothesis still needs to be proven. So it requires proof, you know? It requires proof. So hypothesis is needs proof. Well, remember though that you're never going to truly say that hypothesis confirmed or supported. You're just going to say it's failed to be rejected. Because we're always going to leave the door open for this to change. But a theory, it has proof. It is based on a commutative body of evidence. That means that 
it, unlike a hypothesis where you're just kind of like guessing what's going to happen, a uh, theory is based on what you already observed many times. All right? Now, while uh, a, a hypothesis usually is just putting a relationship that exists between two variables, thus smoking caused cancer, a theory might be a little more broad than that. A theory might describe the whole phenomena. So you could say, for example, the theory of cancer or the theory of smoke-related cancer, where you are not just talking about how smoking causes cancer, you're talking about everything. You're talking about, you know, uh, the biochemistry of that, you're talking about behaviors associated with that, uh, you're talking about other factors which mediate that, like exercise and diet. A theory is more general. So, more often than not, a theory is actually the result of combining many, many hypotheses and studying many, many phenomena which are associated. Like, for example, the theory of evolution is not based on a single hypothesis, but on many hypotheses which are put together. You understand what I'm saying? So, it, a, a hypothesis is very initial. It's based on initial stages of research. You know, while a, while a theory is based is actually very developed. It's based on science that's already been worked on for a very long time. It's based on uh, already putting a lot of these hypotheses together. So, and uh, this is the other thing interesting about the di uh, biggest difference between them. When you're testing a hypothesis, you set out to disprove it. You actually set out to refute this hypothesis. Y your, your goal when you when you are working with hypothesis is to try to prove it wrong. You do the experiment not to confirm your hypothesis, but to see if your hypothesis is wrong or not. It's all the experiment can tell you is that it's not wrong at the, at best. You know. Meanwhile, when you're working with a theory, you're you're seeking proof for that theory. You're seeking uh, to establish that theory by by gathering more and more evidence that seems to confirm that theory. Which means while a hypothesis is only a description that you think it's going to happen, kind of like how we use the word theory in society, a theory is more like this is the most powerful available explanation. It's the simplest, best way to describe what I have right now. Not the same thing as the way we think about theory in society. And it's hard to describe, uh, to discard theories. A hypothesis, like I said, is actually the point. You're trying to, dis to, 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 to discard the hypothesis. You're trying to get rid of it. You're trying to say this hypothesis is, is wrong. That's why you do the experiment. You know, you, you come up with a hypothesis and you do everything possible to disprove it. When you can't disprove it, it can be gathered enough data evidence. It can become part of a theory, which usually involves several hypotheses about the same phenomenon. But a theory, on the other hand, it's hard to change because, by definition, a theory is already based on a lot of evidence. So it's going to take a lot for you to change a, a theory. All right? So that is where science is both dynamic and stable. And that's, I know it's complicated, but it's one of those paradoxes in science. If the idea here is that science is always changing. If you think about what we thought of science 400 years ago and what we think of science today, it's a completely different ballpark. Scientific knowledge has continued to evolve over the last 400 years. That's what we mean by science changes. It changes over time as scientists discover better tools and better evidence to support their theories or even create new theories which better explain the data. Once you find a theory, uh, data has to continue to be examined and if new data comes to light which starts to challenge the hypotheses upon which this theory is based on, only then scientists will start to think about maybe there's a better explanation for this phenomenon than this theory. This theory is no longer the best working explanation and that's when theories are revised. For example, the theory of gravity has been revised many times and we'll talk about that uh, later in the lecture series as we talk about examples of laws and theories and hypotheses. All right? So, a theory is not the same thing as you use in society. Oh, I have a theory about this. It's actually based on a lot of evidence, based on proof. It's after you do experiments. It has a lot of evidence. It incorporates usually many hypotheses. It's your best working explanation based on the proof that already exists. And you set out to, to establish and prove this theory. While a hypothesis is before the experiment, it's a prediction based on inferences. It still requires proof. It is only usually looking at the relationship between two variables in the very initial stages of the experiment. And... You set out to disprove it rather than to prove it. Now, the interesting thing about theories is that once you have a theory, you can actually come up with other hypotheses based on this theory. So it is true that sometimes, even though a hypothesis generates a theory, if it, if it continues to be substantially, uh, you know, if it's no evidence 
comes out without against it, it can develop into part of a theory. But also, theories can also help to, you develop new hypotheses. For example, when Darwin first came up with the theory of evolution, uh, it was a simpler theory than it is today. But since that theory has now uh, come up with so many more aspects, so many more hypotheses which have been confirmed uh, uh, substantially throughout science because uh, the original idea was seem to be seem to be uh, well substantiated and now new ideas come out of the same theory of evolution and, it co and it continuously get tested so in a way to think uh, if I look at in this infographic is that theories will also generate hypotheses uh, new hypotheses over time but that's the difference between hypothesis and theory I hope I was clear enough and on the next uh, video we're going to talk about scientific laws and then we're going to talk about some examples of these things. I'll see you guys then.